Hello and welcome to my latest video. So Games Workshop have sent me the new contrast paints to try out and I thought what better way to uh, have a play with them than to paint uh, some of my Imperial Fists. Uh, so you may have seen I've done some Imperial Fist YouTube videos already and fortunately there is a new uh, contrast color called Imperial Fist so I thought it must be a good choice of color to uh, to use on my Imperial Fist for, uh, Space Marines. Uh, there you can see the comparison of the new yellow com uh, compared to the old Iron yellow and straight away you should be able to see how much brighter this yellow looks. Uh, I'm going to be painting them using a very similar method to how I painted my other Space Marines so if you want to see those uh, you know there are other videos on the profile but generally speaking, what I'm doing is giving them a coat of Mornfang Brown to start with. So this will get rid of any of the black elements on the model. Because what happens is, if you sort of mix yellow and black, you'll get a green colour. And that's even more of a problem if you're using contrast paints. Uh, because contrast paints don't work in quite the same way as normal paints. Now if I use, say, uh, Uriel Yellow, which is what I usually use on top of... Um, the Mornfang Brown, uh, you'll get like a obviously a, a yellow kind of color on there. But if I just sprayed uh, contrast paint on top of Mornfang Brown, it's going to make it darker. Uh, you know, it's not going to look yellow. It, it's not an opaque color. Contrast paints are uh, translucent, and so they need a light base to work with. Uh, and so that, that's why you can see there, I'm mixing in some P3 Mora White into the Mornfang Brown so I can create a Zenithal Spray. And what this will do is it will give me a highlight and a shade, uh, so it's pre-shading, uh, so that when I apply the uh, the contrast paint on top of it, uh, I'll have a, a nice um, you know highlighted and shaded model all in one go. Now, I, have, I was invited to uh, test out the paints at a uh, painting event uh, by uh, Games Workshop and I did test the Imperial Fist Yellow on top of a completely primed white marine at the time so I knew how bright the yellow how bright I could expect it to be so when I did this I and I didn't want it to be quite so bright yellow is very very strong uh, so for this I didn't take the highlight the pre-shade highlights all the way up to white but what I found is I didn't take it high enough. So with the uh, the first layer of contrast, the Imperial Fist contrast paint here, it looks a little bit orangey. Now that's not a fault of the contrast paint, that's just a fault of me. <laughs> um, but I mean, it depends. If you like a slightly darker yellow, then um, you know that's fine. Just don't take the, the pre-shade, um, the pre-highlight up to bright white. Uh, but what I basically did here is, so this is a, a separate Terminator and uh, that I, had started off in exactly the same way as the previous one and so he'd already had his contrast yellow coat and he already looked a bit orangey but I just went back and just took some straight P3 Mora White and you don't have to use P3 Mora White I, you can use any uh, white paint that you, you know just to spray it on and I blasted that onto the model on the uh, head chest shoulders and any other parts here and there that I just wanted to be a bit stronger in how bright and vibrant the yellow was and what I found was so the because it's an airbrush layer and it's very thinly applied it's still not perfectly opaque but it's still a lot brighter and you can see straight away here uh, that it's now much more yellow in the areas that you want it to be yellow uh, and I think this is like a, a really nice color now and I'm probably going to carry on painting the rest of my Imperial Fist using this method uh, because it gives uh, such a nice result you can see how smooth it is but you can also see the uh, the shade how uh, like the contrast between the highlights and the shadows but it's still a very smooth transition now here you can see on the left this really bright yellow marine this is how I've been painting the Imperial Fists up, up, up until now and that's just using uh, Uriel Yellow so I did the same process where I'd start off with Mornfang Brown appreciate it with a bit of uh, white in there and then go over at the top with Uriel Yellow but the thing is the, the standard Uriel Yellow paint um, because it's not a contrast paint it's much more opaque and so what for one thing you get a little bit more speckling you can see it's not as clean and smooth uh, layer and also you don't get as n nice a transition and contrast between the highlights and shades so using the contrast paint is uh, I think gives a much nicer result here now <laughs> from this stage on I'm going to be finishing up the model but I'm also playing around so here you can see I'm using another of the new contrast paints this is rattling 
uh, Rattling Grime. And uh, I will strongly recommend that you do not do what I'm doing here. So I'm using uh, an artist over size four brush to very quickly cover the whole marine in this. And as soon as I started using this, uh, and the reason I did this was because, again, I've, I've used the same method on previous Imperial Fists where I've used um, Dark Oath Flesh, so one of the previous contrast colors. Uh, but it turns out that the Dark Oath Flesh, even though it looks quite dark in the pot, is a little bit more translucent and lighter. Uh, and I hadn't tried, you know, I just thought it'd be fun to try out what the, the Rattling Grind would look like. But it is very, very dark. I think you can see uh, when I applied it. And as soon as I applied that, I was like, oh, well, this is going to take me some work to sort out. Now, again, this isn't an issue with the, the contrast paint. This is an issue with me um, not trying things out beforehand. But at the same time, I, that was the point of the video. Like, I just wanted to see what the, the, uh, the paints were like and how they would work. Uh, now, what I'm basically doing to fix what I've done is using uh, contrast medium, medium. Uh, so you know it's just plain medium. There's no color in it, and I'm just flooding the model with that on the highest raise areas. What you'll find is that you get large puddles of um, contrast medium and contrast paint then like floating on the model. Um, and this is why you need a big brush because the paint will dry quite rapidly, especially in the heat at the minute if you're in the UK. Uh, but what you have to do is take your large brush and just pull off the excess paint and so you'll be focusing on the areas where the you know it has the lightest color but um what i'm saying is basically and um, to just reiterate is just don't do this <laughs> um the color itself i actually love the color the rattling grime it's really nice because the the dark element of it with the, the hint of brown like the grimy color uh, works really well um, in showing up the yellow and I think when you can see where I take off the excess the yellow coming through uh, and I mean you'll see it in a moment when um, you see that the more finished look to it but what I would recommend you do instead is to get some contrast medium and just thin the rattling grime it'll work the same way um, but it'll just be a little bit lighter so you don't have to spend ages and you're not wasting a lot of paint you know removing all that excess you could just basically give the whole model a wash of running grime mixed with contrast uh, medium uh, and I'd say quite a bit of contrast medium um, what you saw there was after it dried it I gave the model a quick coat of matte varnish and the reason for that is um, it just dulls everything down uh, because you get a little bit of shine for the you know the contrast medium uh, contrast paint finish uh, and I prefer a, a more matte uh, finish on my models especially in the recess areas and now what I'm going to do is just carry on and paint the model up in exactly the same way as I painted the other uh, Imperial Fists for my army and this will then see how well they will match in with the uh, the rest of the army while still using different colors for all the you know for the, the contrast colors uh, and what I'm doing is glazing on uh, Uriel Yellow and this is uh, well, it's a glaze is just really heavily thinned down paint uh, and then uh, what well, the main thing is that you uh, when you apply it it's on a it's a very thin layer uh, so it's thinned down probably around about four or five parts water to one part paint in this case uh, different paints require different amounts of thinning and also depending on what sort of glaze you want sometimes you want a slightly thicker glaze sometimes a thinner glaze uh, and you don't have to use water you can use other mediums as well um, but when you apply it you load up your brush and then you take off the excess. So you can see every time I dip the paintbrush into the well palette there, I take it off the screen. I'm rubbing it on some kitchen roll uh, to take off the excess. So it's just a very small amount of slightly yellow damp water <laughs> um, that you then start pushing onto the model. Now, it's not the fastest process. You do have to do quite a few layers to build up. And if you do lots and lots of layers, you'll get a very opaque finish. But the trick I'm using here is that I'm only picking certain areas uh, where the light catches. Um, so you can see like the front of the thigh, the front of the shoulder pads, half the face, a bit of the chest and the, the power fist. Um, and then some areas on the back as well. But you know, just a few areas here and there. It doesn't take that long, you know, about 15 minutes, something like that. Uh, especially, you know, with the, the heat as well, if you've got like, like a nice dry environment, uh, the um, the paint, the, the glaze layers should dry pretty quickly uh, so you can go over the next layer 
um, without having to worry about damaging the previous wear layer. Uh, because that's one thing, you know, when you do a glaze layer, um, you do have to wait for the previous layer to dry uh, because otherwise you'll start lifting paint off and it'll make a, a bit of a mess. Um, but, you know, if you, if you work it on the model, so you start off on certain areas and then slowly work your way around, uh, by the time you've finished all the areas that you want with one glaze layer done, you can start again at the beginning. Uh, so it's a continual process. Uh, once you have done all that and you're happy with it, uh, then obviously there are other parts on the model. I'm just going to go through these quickly. Uh, so you know, if you want a more in-depth elements uh, for how to paint the rest of the model, uh, then you know, just look at some of the other Imperial Fist ones. I don't think it's worth just doing the same thing over and over again. Um, but here you can see I'm just painting up quickly the scroll work on the chest. I'm not going to do any freehand text on this uh, because he's just another grunt that's going to die. Uh, I might in the future, if I think about it, maybe put a, a decal decal uh, transfer, <laughs> one of those on there just to have a bit of text on, or I might even freehand it at some point. But just for the sake of the video, I just wanted to get the uh, the area painted. Um, the main reason for things like this is uh, that it helps to sort of define all the shape and the color, everything becomes much cleaner and neater just by finishing parts off. And sometimes when you're painting a model and you may have put a little bit of effort into a certain area and it still looks a bit kind of dodgy, uh, not really nice to look at. And you can't really understand because you've put a lot of effort in and it should be clean. And the reason it doesn't look good is the surrounding area isn't painted. So it could be really messy in the surrounding areas, which means that then the it's not framed correctly and uh, it could, that can make even the best painted model look bad if the area around the part, the part that you've painted uh, isn't finished. Um, so all I did there for you know, the, the chest piece was just use some um, more gas bone and some screaming skull uh, and that was it, you know, just highlight the edges uh, and you're good to go. Uh, here I'm just doing a bit of battle damage on the armor and this, uh, so I've got two colors here on the wet palette. Um, in the bottom right is Rhinox Hide, and then just above that is Dryad uh, Bark, or Dryad Dark. <laughs> it's one of those two, anyway. Um, the reason for that is because of how bright the uh, the brightest highlight areas are on this, I didn't think I needed to go as uh, bright as, oh, dark rather, as Rhinox Hide. But in some of the, um, the more shaded areas, particularly on the legs, uh, like the lower shins, then being able to use the, the Rhinox hide uh, just allows the uh, the chipping and scratching uh, to show up a bit because if you use the uh, Dryad bark on the lower areas that haven't had any of the Uriel yellow glazed on, uh, it's almost invisible. Like the color is not that uh, dissimilar in terms of brightness. Um, but anyway, once you've painted all the chips on, uh, you take some of the Uriel yellow and mix it with white. If you don't want to do that <laughs> because you're feeling a bit lazy, then you can just use uh, Dawn yellow instead, or if you've got Vallejo colors, Ice yellow. And all you're doing is just very quickly uh, picking out the lower edges on the chips. Now, you don't have to do every single one. Uh, I'm doing all the main ones on the chest and head, picking those up because uh, those are, again, focal points that people will look at. Uh, when you do the chips on the feet uh, and legs don't bother so much on highlighting those i've done a few of them but when you put the uh, weathering powder on at the end it will cover a lot of that and uh, so you'll basically be wasting your time uh, just to paint the gun quickly here i've got some german gray uh, some neutral gray and a bit of black as well just to, to blend it in uh, so uh, <laughs> remembering my mistakes on the, the previous time i painted a uh, a bolt gun on the, the heavy weapon uh, Imperial Fist that I've uh, painted on previous video. I've kept the paint a little bit thinner here. So the first color that I used was German Grey. I painted that on. You can see it, it's quite uh, translucent and fairly smooth with how it's applied. Uh, you paint about two thirds of the way down so you leave it uh, pure black at the top on the side. And then just go for neutral grey. Now these are both around about two parts water to one part paint. Uh, of course, check it yourself uh, to make sure that you've got like a good consistency when you apply it. Both of these colors have really go good coverage. So even thinning them down quite a bit, uh, they should still leave a pretty good mark. But you can see here, I just quickly flicked backwards and forwards between the colors 
uh, and that allows me to blend them on the model. You see, um, just using these three colors, and there's quite a big uh, tonal jump between uh, especially the German gray and the neutral gray. And you can see here as I'm painting the edge highlight, um, how bright that looks compared to uh, the other grays on there. Uh, but you know, because the, the paint's wet and like both colors were wet at the time, uh, so you have to move pretty quick to do it but as I say you can blend on the model and so you get like a really smooth blend by doing that uh, here you can just see just very quickly I'm doing a couple of scratches as well um, obviously you need a nice uh, sharp point on your brush when doing this otherwise you'll end up with quite sort of blobby marks um, but all of the painting that I did on the gun there um, it was like keeping the, the amount of paint on the brush fairly small uh, just so that you don't make any mess and you have a, a lot more control over it. Now here quickly I'm just going to be painting the little uh, blue lenses on his, um, I guess, sort of shoulderish area uh, and also I'll be painting up his eye quickly. Um, again this has been done in the previous videos but um, this will just give you a, a very quick uh, idea on how to do it. If you see in the top left there on the wet palette, so at the bottom left it's uh, Sotec Green uh, the lighter blue above that is again Sotec Green with a bit of white. Same again, Sotec Green with more white. Top, Sotec, it's basically mostly white with a small amount of Sotec Green. To the right of those four is a small amount of P3 Mora White. In the bottom right hand corner there is some Sotec Green heavily watered down. So that's around about four, well, three or four parts water to one part paint. And you'll see why I need that in a moment as well. Uh, but for painting the, uh, the little circle lens there, um, you know it's pretty straightforward <laughs> if you've watched the video um, you just paint like the bottom right three quarters of the lens in Sotec Green uh, and then a dot in the top left then uh, each successive highlight layer uh, you make the area that you cover a little bit less um, don't bother putting too many layers in the top left hand corner for the uh, sort of like the little f lens flare um, all you need is like one highlight color on top of the Sotec green and then the dot of white at the end and you'll just see just there um, just to make it sort of high contrast and shine do that for both of them I'm only showing you one side because uh, it's easier to show this one side um, but now I'm going to quickly show you how to paint the eye as well uh, it's exactly the same process Sotec green just fill in the eye don't worry if you get it into some of the recesses a little bit uh, you know so the uh, Sotec green is still darker than the yellow, so you'll still get a, a nice outline uh, compared to the, the yellow. Is like a, is it, the eye will still keep its definition. Here we're using the Sotec green uh, that I told you was watered down, so it's around, as I said, around about three or five, four parts water to one part paint. Uh, you start around about halfway down, two thirds of the way down of the uh, the lower face, then push the paint up towards the eye. You'll see. Um, I haven't really uh, taken enough of the, the paint off of the brush so this is a glaze layer again so you're supposed to rub off the excess paint onto a kitchen roll but you know it, it didn't matter too much uh, I was just doing it quickly anyway the only problem with trying to do that quickly is it ends up not being quicker because now you have to wait for the layer to dry before you can add any more to it um, but there you can see it's uh, drying out now and then you just do a couple of layers getting a little bit closer to the eye each time so the fur further out you are don't go over that too much like just go over that once uh you know for the first stage and as you get closer to the eye for each successive layer um you know you're obviously getting smaller and smaller uh with each uh successive layer then um for the you just do for the first highlight a little line underneath the eye this will help to define it and also help to suggest uh, the light catching the edge of the the lower part of the eye and then you do a couple of layers on the lens itself. Now this is where it is important that you don't get the paint into the recesses because again, the, so the Sotec Green on its own is darker, obviously, because as you add the, the next few layers of um, increasing amounts of white, uh, it will increase the contrast so that um, sort of defining edge underneath the eye will then, in comparison, look darker and darker. And you can see here just going over the eyes multiple times, um, try and keep it nice and neat. Uh, always make sure that you don't have too much paint on your brush. You can see on the tip of my brush it's still very sharp. 
what you have to do is either rub the paint off on your thumb or on like a tile or even on your wet palette whatever it is but take off the excess paint so that it and you basically are sharpening it so you have a nice hard sharp tip and the paint won't flood off onto the model uh, because you've taken off the excess like if you just put a little dob of like run your um, brush through some paint and then touch the model without rubbing off the excess it will blob onto the model and you don't have the control of it uh, so here what I'm doing is just painting in the uh, the metal area quickly uh, and this is a mixture of chrome and exhaust manifold from uh, Vallejo uh, you don't have to use these colors if you don't want to uh, I th you know pretty much any sort of I always say bulk and metal kind of color because that's the color that I can remember. I I don't think they called that anymore. I really need to check what the current Games Workshop colors are called. Um, but you know, any sort of steel kind of color will do. The reason I added uh, chrome to this mix was I wanted like a nice bright highlight, um, but I didn't take into account how dark the uh, rattling grime contrast over the top of the uh, exhaust manifold. So I'd already obviously painted on some um, metallic elements onto the model with exhaust manifold and when it had the rattling grime on top it went really really dark uh, so when I was doing the highlights uh, I didn't take into account the fact that the chrome mix with the exhaust manifold would be so bright in comparison so uh, actually um, what I decided was you can see that I just put plain exhaust manifold into the well palette there and even that is pretty bright and you're not painting over the whole of the area that you've already painted you're just picking out the areas that will catch the most light so you know when you hold the model sort of upright see how the light from the lamp catches it and you know just pick out those areas um, for, for nice bright highlights basically also when you've done this pick out all the rivets on the model uh, that's the only negative on these Tartarus I picked these in particular one i like the look of them anyway um, but i do find that the uh, cataphracty terminators they look really nice and menacing but they have a lot of extra detail whereas the uh, the tartaros terminators they don't have any trim so they, they match really nicely with the mark six marines um, and i thought you know for painting uh, up an army quickly you know then tartaros is the way to go uh, however <laughs> there's like rivets all over it so that does slow you down a little bit more I suppose it's not that dissimilar to the fact that the uh, the Mark 6 Marines still have the shoulder studs as well so this is basically the equivalent of painting the shoulder studs but um, there's just a few more of them and they're smaller um, so that's basically the model finish I'm just going to quickly show you how I do my bases some people complain they don't like them I don't really care um, this is just to get the base done as quickly as possible like absolute basic minimum uh, just to to have something that I can use on the tabletop and keep my army coherent and it also matches other armies that I've got uh, particularly my uh, death guard army and I'm going to be doing uh, a video uh, on YouTube for how I'll paint my death guard um, very very soon uh, but I'm going to be using some of the new mark 6 marines as well uh, just to show you that you can make cool looking uh, death guard in mark 6 uh, so I'm using Dark Sand by Forge World here, uh, weathering powder, and you just sort of scrub it onto the model. And like a few people have asked, doesn't this rub off? Uh, no, you're sealing it with uh, matte varnish. So once you've covered the base and got some on the, the lower parts of the legs, uh, like it's very easy to apply here. You can see just scrubbing it on. There's no, <laughs> no real painting of the base necessary. But you can see here now, I've just done a very like heavily loaded uh, matte varnish on the areas that I've just covered. Uh, when they're wet it will look darker but that's because it's still wet uh, you have to leave it to dry for a little bit uh, and the, the weathering powder will then show like bright when it dries but while the you know because it's such a heavily loaded amount that I put on you can then do another layer of weathering powder and then do another layer of matte varnish and then do another layer of weathering powder so you have like this really sort of chunky uh, dirty uh, powdered base uh, and it's still you know it'll stay on there quite firmly but there's the the end of the video the uh, the final piece um, I'm quite happy with how that turned out uh, it's fairly quick to do as well I think the uh, the Imperial Fist contrast in particular is uh, 
like a really nice yellow color for the uh, Imperial Fist. I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to stick with the Rattling Grime. Um, there's a few other colors I might still try out to see uh, which way it goes because this makes them a little bit uh, cooler in the, the yellow, like in the shadows especially, they're, they're a bit cooler looking compared to the Dark Oath Flesh that I was using before. But just for the sake of this video, I wanted to try out like a, another one of the new colors. So in that case, it was Rattling Grime. Um, and it caused me a few issues, but you know, that was uh, my fault rather than the paint's fault. But anyway, that's the uh, the end of the video. I am going to do uh, another video for contrast on some Age of Sigma models as well, where I use a few more colors and uh, have a bit of fun. So don't worry if you don't think that's enough uh, contrast. But as I said, that's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.